Good afternoon. In this video, I want to briefly look at the logic of Paul as he's dealing with Romans 10, 13 uh, through 10, 15. And you see it here, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, and that's the verse that keeps, uh, people could stumble over because they were saved and call upon the name of the Lord and think to, uh, that's dealing with faith and sal eternal salvation. But if you look here, the logic of Paul, how he, like a lawyer, just brings you along and we talk with questions. He's just going to bring you along and you have to answer a particular way. Uh, uh, no, you have to answer, and that's, he's just going to guide you right through. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? The answer is, you can't. You can't. That's, what Paul, that's the answer Paul is leading you to. You can't believe on him whom you haven't. You can't call upon him whom you have not believed. Belief becomes full calling. Save people, call upon the name of the Lord. That's the, whole, that's the point he's making here. How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? They can't. You can't believe in him until you've heard him. So you can't, you can't, you can't uh, believe until you hear, and, and you can't call upon him until you believe. And how shall they hear without a preacher? You can't. You need a preacher. So you can't hear until you get a preacher, and you can't believe until you hear, and you can't, you can't call upon him, Lord, until you believe. And how shall they preach except they be sent? They can't. You're just having a preacher unless he's sent. So you have, you have the, the, uh, unless the preacher's sent, you can't, you can't hear the word of God. If you can't hear the word of God, you can't believe in the word of God. If you can't believe in the word of God, you can't call upon the name of the Lord. Of God, uh, uh, upon the name of the Lord, so you have to believe. And you know, once you believe, you're saved. So then, calling is from a saved person. So you need to hear the word of God in order to believe in the word of, the word of God. You need a preacher, because he's got to be, and he's got to be sent. All these things are necessary to hear the gospel, and then believe in the gospel and get saved. And then you can call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. You can't call upon, you can't call, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? You can't. All these are can'ts. And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? They can't. And, and how shall they hear without a preacher? They can't. And how shall they preach except they be sent? They can't. And then it's a quotation from Isaiah 52, 7 and 8, which is dealing with salvation of deliverance of the nation of Israel. If you look at Isaiah 52, Seven, eight. And he's talking, he quotes him from there. Uh, How beautiful upon the mountains of the feet of him that bringeth good tidings and publish peace, that, bring, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publish salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. This is dealing with the salvation of the nation of Israel, deliverance by God. And it uh, goes on here, The watchman shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, they shall see eye to eye with the Lord, when the Lord shall bring against Zion. Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. That's what the salvation is, redeeming Jerusalem as a nation. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes, the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The salvation is a national salvation of Israel, and that's what the second habit is referring to. So that Paul leads you logically through that. That's why 1013 cannot be referring to eternal salvation, even though the evangelists like it, the true preachers like it. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a verse that, you know, people have taken out of context. But doctrinally speaking, it is not referring to anyone getting saved by calling upon him the Lord. Uh, because you could, it says you can't call until he, on him on who they have not believed. You can't do it. They can't believe. So logically, Paul leads you, they can't call upon him on whom they have not believed. Once you believe, you're saved. Then the calling happens as a saved person. You have to be your prayers, that's we calling upon the Lord, but deliverance. And that's what that salvation is referring to. At the end of Acts uh, uh, 28, that's what Paul was talking to the Jews about. The Jews come seeing him, see him in Rome, and he discusses it with them. Uh, discusses why he's in prison, and they, they come to him and he asks them. Uh, it says in verse 23, And they appoint him a day that came, uh, came many to him into his lodging, to which he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning to evening, persuading us that you're trying to convince a person. That's what Abraham being fully persuaded. That's an aspect of faith. When a person is persuaded, he's now believed. That's, he, 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 that's what Paul's, Paul's trying to do. Some believe the things that were spoken, some believe not. So the issue comes where they, they're believing some of this, but they're not, they're not confessing it. They're not getting out of Judaism. Some believe not. They stayed... They, as unbelievers, others were believing it, but they would not confess 
and get out and uh, make that separation. That's the same happened in John 12, 42. They were, not, they were believing him, believing in Jesus, but they were not confessing him. And when they agreed, among, not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and heal, and say, Healing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, uh, and their ears are dull of healing. That's why they, wouldn't, they just can't heal anybody. Anyway. That's, that's a hardening of Israel uh, that's going on right now. And their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes. See, they close their eyes. They close their eyes. They, this is volitional. They're the ones shutting their eyes to the truth. And hear what their ears, and understand with their heart, and shall be converted, and I shall heal them. But being known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and they, and they will heal it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. That was the problem the Jews had of, of the issue of this, the gospel going to the Gentiles and understanding that. And Paul was trying to reach the, Gen, of the Jews, uh, not only to get saved, but to make that separation, to get out of Judaism, um, which was crucial uh, for their survival, their physical survival. And uh, that was, uh, you know, when Jerusalem was destroyed, uh, many, uh, the, uh, many Jews, were, like 600,000 Jews were killed. Yeah, by uh, the moments in that um, period, and then another one even followed after that, another destruction. Uh, so th this was, was going on, that's why they give the tongues was given to warn the Jew of this issue. Uh, the Lord warned the Jews about this issue in, in, in the Gospels as well, that there was a coming wrath that was on them. Paul warns about the first, uh, the, the first Thessalonians chapter 2 about the wrath that was upon them. This is not the tribulation, the seven-year tribulation, this is dealing with uh, the... Uh, the these judgment, these they were under judgment for killing their Messiah, and that's what uh, Peter was warning uh, the Jews about in, uh, in Acts chapter two, that that was coming on that that generation, that generation has come with you know every generation after, they, but that particular generation suffered a wrath, and then of course uh, they've been under a, 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 a judgment, a judgment of God for the last two thousand years. So again, that's so that's the logical Paul explains what ten thirteen cannot refer to eternal salvation. It has to refer to a different type of salvation, but simply the fact is that they can't call upon him whom they have not believed. That's and they say they, boy, they can't. They can't. They can't. And that's the logic of it. And so we get to ten thirteen, you're not talking about someone uh, 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 who's calling upon the name of the Lord in order to be saved eternally, but for someone who's getting uh, as a saved person calling upon the name of the Lord for a different type of salvation. And that's why ten thirteen should not be used as a text uh, to, uh, you know, for gospel, gospel text, because it's really not referring to it. It's referring to a different type of salvation. Amen. Thank you.